Hello, my name is Vincent Villardo, and I'm an application support specialist at Blue Marble Geographics. Today, we're going to be walking through how to compare a point cloud to a grid in Global Mapper 25.1. Now, if I open up a workspace in Global Mapper 25.1, here I've got a 2013 digital surface model, the layer underneath for Augusta, Maine, and a 2020 LiDAR point cloud for a subset of that same area. And what 25.1 has that previous versions of Global Mapper did not is the ability to compare a point cloud to a grid. Previously, you could compare a point cloud to a point cloud or a grid to a grid. Now, opening it up in the 3D viewer, you can see that the points of the point cloud in some cases are lying above the actual terrain of the earlier digital surface model. And if I was to draw a path with the path profile through some trees, we can see that some of the points, oh, I've got to change the settings so that the uh, points show up. Here we go, we're in the path profile settings. It seems to want us to check this box so that we display the LiDAR points that are uh, in the vicinity of the path we've drawn. You can see that in some cases, the LiDAR points are five or 10 meters even above the digital surface model. So there's been a significant amount of change in the seven years between the creation of the digital surface model and this new LiDAR point cloud. So what we're going to do today is go into LiDAR analysis. And specifically, we want the QC tools, the compare point clouds tool. And we have the option to compare against a layer. We're going to compare against the 2013 DSM. And we're going to find changes in the 2020 LiDAR. The first option here is for the minimum distance between cloud points. And that is just a question of what is the minimum distance that you consider a significant change between the uh, previous grid and the current LiDAR point cloud. Here I'm going to just start it off with 2.5 feet. And we'll consider anything that is at least that much of a change to be significant. There will be, at the end of this process, a layer created for the points that have changed significantly in those seven years. Um, we could, if we wanted to exclude points that are kind of on their own, don't have neighboring points, we could ignore differences with fewer than a certain number of neighbor points. Um, here, I'm just going to leave that at the default setting of one. And then there's a few other checkboxes we're going to leave unchecked by default. Um, you could include points from both point cloud sets that are not in the other, uh, which would give you an output layer for the changed points in both layers. Um, you could check this box to mark changed points as deleted in the original point cloud that they come from. Here, we're actually just going to leave the original point cloud as it was. And then you also have the option to include changes that are occurring outside of the bounding box of the compare against layer. Here, all of our LiDAR points are within the bounds of the surface model, so that doesn't actually apply. But if there were points out to the west or the north of the surface model, we could consider whether we want to consider those to be changes. I'm going to check these boxes to save the distance to closest point in a generic field. And I'm going to check the box to create a difference report. And then I'll hit OK to run the compare point clouds and grids tool. It runs pretty quickly because it's a small data set. And we get this uh, plot that shows us the distances between the points and the grid. And you can see that for the most part, you know, the points are very close to the grid. But there are some places where the points are actually four to six meters higher than the grid. Um, a significant number are showing up, you know, between zero and two meters above the grid. We have a mean value, standard deviation, which represent kind of some overall statistics for the comparison between the point cloud and the grid. You can export this plot 
to one of a few different file formats. You can choose between PDF, PS, SVG, and EPS. Here I'm going to just export it to a PDF. That's the default. I'll hit Save As, and I'll save it to Plot of Differences is what I'll name the PDF. I'll hit Save. And then when I go into my File Explorer, I can double click on that, open up the PDF, and I'll see a copy of that plot, which can be opened up in any kind of other uh, application or platform. Furthermore, you can save a report of the differences, and that'll just create a text file with some of the basic uh, values that we see in the table here. So you can see the mean and the standard deviation and the completeness for that general comparison between the 2020 LiDAR and the 2013 DSM. Furthermore, we get this layer created of all of the points that have changed significantly between 2013 and 2017. And if we uncheck both of the original layers, we can see that this isn't a full coverage of what the LiDAR was showing earlier. It's just the areas that have significantly changed. And you can see it's mostly the trees um, from that original LiDAR uh, surface model that we can see have grown um, between 2013 and 2020. So if you'd like to learn more about how to use the Compare Point Clouds tool in Global Mapper 25.1, you can reach us through our website or contact the support team at geohelp at bluemarblegeo.com. Thanks for watching.